वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज आ वीकली रैप of all that made the news all that didn't and all that should have and all that shouldn't have we agree we disagree we critique and occasionally we beat each other up but it's all good fun subscribe this is a news laundry podcast and you're listening to nl hafta angrez apna lagan aur news laundry apna hafta kabhi maaf nahi karte when the public pays the public is served and when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe to news laundry help keep news independent and also help us grow so we can do more stories for you and bring you more podcasts so thank you so much for joining us today on the panel we have our associate editor manisha pande hello we have a consulting editor anandanathan hello uh, we have madhu rehan who will just be joining us because we have so much to do in office because we are so so short staffed she is just between places so that's why you guys should subscribe so we can get more people <laughs> and joining us from bombay is paranjoy guha thakurta hi paranjoy नमस्कार मैं मुंबई में हूँ आजकल इस जगह को मुंबई कहते हैं बॉम्बे नहीं ठीक है मुंबई <laughs> से ठाकुरता साहब जो ओरिजिनली कोलकाता के हैं है ना जी हाँ जी हाँ मैं यहीं पे हूँ और आ, मेरा परिचय अगर आप चाहते हैं आ, मैं संपादक हूँ आई एम दी एडिटर ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक एंड पोलिटिकल वीकली यस and you had you started your career in 1977 you worked with business india business world telegraph india day pioneer you've uh, it's not sharmaiye mat mere ko 40 <laughs> saal ho gaya main burapa i am a senior citizen hi i know you're a senior <laughs> citizen but i also want there two more introductions that i want to make you're not just a journalist you're a director and a producer of documentaries as well uh, including one called grabbing eyeballs what's unethical about television news in india and editorial selling news or products and most importantly you self published a book called gas wars crony capitalism and the ambani's which i have read and i think i interviewed about you about that and i think you had a uh, reliance came after you uh, or mukesh bhai is that right that's why is in well, mumbai the lawyers uh, representing the two brothers issued me four sets of legal notices oh and what's the status now nothing came out of it they never took me to court <laughs> oh So, but no. have you, but have you subscribed to Jio or not? <laughs> are you, are you? No, I haven't. I, I must confess, I haven't yet done that. I must do it one of these days very soon. Now, see, you can get your money back if you just do some free data downloading from Jio. But okay, moving on. I'll just quickly go over what all we'll discuss today. Uh, the Supreme Court orders L K Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi, and Umarthi to be tried on criminal conspiracy charges. uh then the former delhi chief justice has written a scathing piece on nationalism um it's actually a speech he delivered oh he's a speech yeah. okay. i see then uh, uma bharti says she won't resign and koi mai ka lal kuch nahi kar sakta unka bsf sacks tej bahadur yadav vijay malya arrested and granted bail in 3 hours china announced the names of six places in arunachal after the lai lama's visit the video of a kashmiri being tied to military jeep and general panag's comment which caused a twitter outrage and then try episode we'd like to discuss that a little bit sunu nigam's tweet i wouldn't like to discuss that for too long but i would like to discuss why it became like prime time news and there was nothing else happening in the country and the red beacon cars banned that is a very welcome sign i'm glad the prime minister has done that um and if you have time we'll discuss a little more but before we start i mean and then i have to say hmm. that we are worried because uh, the producers of lagan might sue us why like times now is going to sue angrez apna lagan ah, so can you not repeat that next time please angrez apna lagan i ashutosh gowarikar should come after me <laughs> with pleasure that's what i want but uh, also sorry aiadm ke amma group announced that it has decided to keep vk sasikal and tt dinakar out of the party uh, that entire fracas also maybe we can discuss that a little bit So let's start with our guest Paron Joy this week yes. in your view what was the most important piece of news that dominated headlines or didn't uh you know that's not an easy question to answer hmm. for instance today's all all of today's newspapers web, websites last evening's television channels were all dominated by one story that's a supreme court directive on the whole uh, ayodhya babri masjid issue and the fact that lk adwani mulli manohar joshi uma bharti among others were now going to be i mean, I mean the whole 
trial proceedings against them are going to be expedited. Right. Now, now, now this is a big, big story. At the same time, you'll find that this story might fade away day after tomorrow. I mean, so these stories, sometimes their lives tend to be shorter than you think. But nevertheless, I think this is arguably the biggest story. It happens to have broken yesterday in the sense that the Supreme Court uh, directive came yesterday. Yes. But given the fact that this has been dragging on for a quarter century, the, the Babri Masjid was demolished in December 1992. Hmm. So this is, and, and it, it, there is a legal aspect to it, there's a political aspect to it. I mean, the whole issue is so big that I think, if you ask me, it is the biggest story, yes. Okay. Um, if Anand, you want me to elaborate on why I say it's the biggest story, I could hold forth for a few more minutes. No, we'll get to that as well. Anand, do you think it's the biggest story? Uh, is it a political story or is it a story of justice or is there something more than meets the yeah, eye? I, I agree with uh, Prananjoy because it, uh, as you say, it has two aspects to it. One is the, uh, the as they say, the wheels of justice hmm. are grinding. You know, it's like Chucky PCing, PCing, PCing. It's huh. been like 20, 30 years. And the other is the political aspect to it because many people are saying that this is uh, Modi's doing. Payback. It's payback. Uh, uh, and uh, you see, the the thing is, because CBI is not independent. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because it is not. Mm. It was supposed to be. Arun Jaitley gave a pledge when he was in opposition that first thing we're going to do is to make CBI independent. Mm. But of course, as so many other pledges that he gave, this one also is you know eaten dust. Uh, well, of course, conspiracy theories will fly. You know, so uh, Manisha, yeah, it is a big story. Okay. Uh, moving on to, um, you know, the second thing that I'd like to talk about is um, this Delhi Chief Justice's speech. Anand, let me start with you. Too much? Because I, I suspect you think that, you know, it was always a problem. Why is he so concerned now? Okay, in, in just a couple of words, I'll tell you what he's, he said. Justice A.P. Shah, who is the former Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court, has said that this imposition of nationalism is problematic and he has slammed the judiciary for not upholding free speech. Uh, and he's saying that's really dangerous for a country. Basically, yeah. So, ka hai. yeah. so I, you know, I, I, as I said, I, I'm an absolute fan of Justice Shah. If I remember, he was the one who actually struck down 377. Hmm. And it was a crime that the Supreme Court actually lobbed it back in the Parliament's, uh, yes. uh, you know, court. Hmm. So, and he's, I completely agree with him in the sense that if you remember the, the Supreme Court, court and court judgment, because it is not a, a considered judgment about people have to stand and, uh, right. you know, during national anthem and all that. So he's absolutely right. You know, this nationalism thing and, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I completely agree with him. But why do you think a lot of other justices in this country have this view of nationalism which is which is a nationalistic view of nationalism i mean and then this is because they are from our own society you know very rarely do you find justices who are uh, i mean it's like you know as we know now uh, our nation is divided into left wing and right wing hmm. very few people you would find who are wingless or you know whatever or chicken wing or, ch or chicken wing hmm. or colonel uh, but uh, th the whole point is that when you see a judge who is able to dissociate himself or herself a from a possible ideology that he or she may have or secondly look at it in an amazingly objective fashion because after all that is the role that a judge must play sure. especially when there is no jury hmm. you know it becomes all the more important it's very challenging his word as well. is the final word i mean i say okay in high court it's not but supreme court yeah. i mean but generally and Anand Vardhan in the previous hafta or the hafta before that had said that there has to be a process where Hindus need to start feeling, you know, to, to sort of make amends for the wrongs of the medieval India. When we were speaking about how there is a there is a feeling among a large section of Hindus that, you know, the wrongs that were committed against Hinduism have to be corrected. And I said a point that even if that is so, that resolution has to be found in modern India, modern democratic India, not in medieval India. So the whole point of this justification where you were tearing down a structure today for what happened back then, I mean, that discourse has to change and politicians and journalists have to do that. Hmm. See, I, I just want to say one thing. <clears throat> Please bear with me for like 30 seconds. What is justice? Justice is to deliver 
something to humanity a feeling that you cannot take pride and joy from a crime from an illegality okay so while i i distinctly remember the day when it fell down and after that uh, you know i i felt like millions feel now ki uh, you know few of them or uh, a lot of them feel now that there should be a hospital ya mandir masjid isai ghar ye aur gurdwara ek sath banao now i've i've come to believe that you know the the principal fight for or against babri masjid is by religious groups and as an atheist i can take a detached uh, view of it which is that when people believe jesus walks on water when people believe jesus jesus was born of immaculate conception when islam uh, in islam they believe they're flying horses and everything fair enough uh, 800 million or 400 500 million P- hindus believe that ram was born there mm. let supreme court decide okay there there is archaeological evidence or not or whatever it is but during the time it does that it must not allow people to take pride and joy in something that was a crime so rebuild it brick by brick to the original no, babri structure and then supreme court should decide on it whichever way it goes okay, we have to move on okay. to the next subject uh, paranjay i'll give you the last word yes. of this quickly before we move uh, on to the next can i briefly intervene you know that's this brain. point is very very important hmm. what is history what is factually correct the one is not even talking about interpretations of history what is historic and what is mythology i, I think what is a myth i think it's very very important you know i remember asking i remember asking mr advani this question and said it doesn't matter it doesn't matter he said so long as large numbers of people believe that lord ram was actually born in that spot in that very place where the babri masjid stood that's what matters i said but then what is the evidence i mean is there archaeological evidence is there historical evidence he said it doesn't matter yeah but that's the, the position belief, the faith. that's the position so of many people that it doesn't i think we yeah. move back in time Okay, now we come to a bit where I have to get into a debate with Anand Ranganathan on a brilliant piece he wrote about Ambedkar. Oh, thank who you. I also think is a is my hero in a lot of ways. It was how historians have conve- con- conveniently ignored what Ambedkar said about Islam, and he was very critical about it. And they just keep harping on how critical he was about Hinduism because it suits the liberal, you know, uh, left of center narrative. Now. while i think it's a brilliant piece and it's important i disagree on two specific things anand please one is where there is an expectation that every historian you know i know you have issue with guha who i really think in india in contemporary india there's not such a great in fact we have a letter regarding history which is addressed to mr vardhan i'll read that after this debate that they haven't explored this issue now as long as they haven't made up stuff i don't think anyone can have god's theorem that they've explored everything that is one and the other is you said when you don't like the text you talk about context but context is everything so i will read out this piece of the man you consider your hero and i you must read this book worshiping false gods where uh-huh. arun shori has ripped apart mr ambedkar unfairly because he has stripped it of context i quote dr ambedkar the baniya is the worst parasitic class known to history i hope all you agarwals guptas kothiwals are listening to this Is there a baniya here? The baniya is the is the worst parasitic class known to history. In him, the vi- vice of money making is unredeemed by culture or conscience. He is like an undertaker who prospers when there is an ap- epidemic. The only difference is that the undertaker does not create an epidemic, while the baniya does. With no conscience, there is no fraud and no chickenery that he will not commit. His grip over the nation is complete. The whole of poor, starving, illiterate India is mortgaged to the baniya. So. Anand, do you think Ambedkar was a casteist bigot, based okay, on those so two paragraphs? Let me address this first, mm. and then to the other point about you know Guha and other historians. You see, the point in this, what he said about it is extreme generalization, in my view. It is like when people say Germans have no bloody sense of humor, or British don't know how to they cook. They don't. They don't. Well, there you go. You know, so you will always find some Germans who, in fact, I had a German friend, Austin, who had a fantastic laugh. sense of humor. They can't laugh. Japanese can't laugh. They only laugh at people. Uh, the falling. whole Lufthansa ad is based on that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Hmm. Okay. So uh, he has stereotyped, and he has generalized. Right. But it is different from saying that uh, is the is he saying this in context or not? Now, if he was talking of a particular banya, right? I hate to use. First of all, I hate to use this word hmm. banya, and you know, any because hmm. I. 
I I'm not I don't want to even mention caste and mm. caste thing but if he was talking of someone you know from this caste and in between he kind of inserted this that look this is what baniyas are now I personally I you know you can say all right well you know there could be a context because he's talking of a person and maybe you know in vilifying that person he's kind of taken on you know the whole shape of the caste and and everything but when he's talking of let's say a book that hasn't changed for 1400 years and that god has ordained shall never change and he's made some statements which i write in my article you it is context devoid no, no. you can i'm so not saying there's anything so wrong with that but i'm only talking about i'm not saying that there is no valid critique of islam i myself have written a piece saying that yeah. there's something de- i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the expectation that just because someone hasn't explored this side of a person that person is not credible okay, you so have not you have written the... eight pieces on ambedkar yeah. you have not explored the side and this was a slur on bapu because he was talking about that baniya as well because that baniya had india eating out of his hand and this man was so bitter because he was getting trampled on he couldn't win an election because they thought they'd sweep you know he voted for pakistan he voted for separate electorates then he did a u turn i mean and uh, i i may not get the exact uh, quote but shori has written when he said that i would rather be ruled by an oppressive british mm. than a, a, a than a blood sucking uh, brahmanical order I, he opposed independence at several occasions and when you see the uh, letters that shori has quoted between these viceroys when they had exchange with the raja they used to refer to him yeah he's dying to be on the high court he's applied for because you had to get a permit to then he was on some uh, committee that uh, the british royal empire had set up when the quit india movement happened he was happily taking every position they gave him now i can understand that i think his angst with the brahmanic lord was valid i am not saying it wasn't valid all i'm saying is just because you have not explored that side but only explored the greatness that doesn't make you any less of a writer no, just because goha has not explored this anti islamist side of ambedkar doesn't make him less of a historian everyone explore their side sun liya afrika mufat khoro not to brag or anything but news laundry hafta features in the top 50 in the world on SoundCloud in the news and politics category for podcasts so do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe help keep news independent and free all news laundry podcasts are available on iTunes and Stitcher and any other podcast platform